You all remember Sex in the City, don't you? Before the show got started in 1998, a high-heeled shoe was about three inches high. But that's when Carrie Bradshaw and her shoes changed everything. Sex in the City ran until 2004, but it also spawned two feature films, and I have to say, stilettos were in the starring roles. Before long, uh, the competition was on to see who could make the highest, sexiest shoe out there. Now, some of these heels were 8 inches tall, although most were more like 120 centimeters, which is closer to 5 inches. Part of the allure was that these shoes were phenomenally expensive. A cool thousand or more for a lot of Manolos and Jimmy Choo's. Those are the shoes that the gals from Sex in the City loved so much. The designer Alexander McQueen put out a gold T-strap set on a five and a half inch heel which called for an outlay of $3,495. You had to ask yourself, had women lost their minds? I started thinking about what high heels were actually doing to us when two events coincided in San Francisco. The North American Spine Society's annual conference and the launching of a new line of moderately priced Jimmy Choo shoes at H&M. For a few days, there were several thousand spine surgeons in San Francisco, and H&M was doing business development for them. Maybe it was this juxtaposition that made me start thinking about what high heels were doing to us. The shoes had already been launched in several other cities, and in some cases, the crowds had gotten out of control. I'm talking about hand-to-hand -hand combat with stilettos requiring police intervention. When I arrived at the Jimmy Choo event in the H&M store in Union Square in San Francisco at 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning, the line was already eight blocks long. I expected to get a good look at the next generation of back pain victims. We are over 17 hours waiting for the Jimmy Choo shoe and clothing line release in H&M San Francisco. We came here Friday, Friday straight, straight from, from work. work. Actually going to get six pairs of shoes. These were young women now who, with adequate dosing of Tylenol, could handle five-inch heels, but eventually they'd be hobbling through Nordstrom with the rest of us, looking for a vaguely feminine pair of sensible flats Maybe it was the economy. High heels have long been a socioeconomic indicator, and they get taller when money is tight. And at this point in 2009, money was very tight indeed. High heels go all the way back to Aeschylus, the father of Greek tragedy, who had his heroes, who were men of course, wear shoes with a very high wedge so that they'd be taller and instantly recognizable on the stage. In Europe in the 14th century, a shoe called the Chopin was popular. That was a hollowed cylinder made of cork, widely adopted by Venetian courtesans to help them negotiate filthy and wet streets, generally with a servant on each elbow for balance. But in fact, it was Catherine de' Medici who made high heels elegant. She was very short, so she introduced them to the French court and of course everyone had to have them. Women were trained to take mincing little steps to keep from falling on their faces. High heels made it to America in a very odd way. As the story goes, there was a brothel in New Orleans, Madame Cathy's it was called, and it harbored a French prostitute who was very, very popular. Her trademark was to wear high heels, and men liked those shoes so much that, believe it or not, they started ordering them from France for their wives, at least until the first high heel shoe factory opened in the U.S. in 1880. The same question kept coming up in my mind over and over again. Why were we doing this? Women think that high heels make them look better, and studies show that they are absolutely right. They do. They change the mechanics of a woman's gait. 
one study conducted at the University of Portsmouth reported in the journal Evolution and Human Behavior on two experiments. In the first, women wore flat shoes. In the second, the same women wore high heels. And guess what? The women in heels were reported to be much more attractive than those who wore flat shoes. Yes, that would be the same women. Our feet are complex structures, intricate networks, joints, ligaments, and tendons. There are 26 bones, 33 joints, 60 muscles, more than 100 ligaments in our feet which constitute about a quarter of the 206 bones in our bodies. And when we walk, our feet absorb at least three times as much force as they do when we're just standing around. We need the whole foot to absorb that foot strike. But when we wear high heels, all the force is concentrated in an area not much larger than a silver dollar. In a low-heeled shoe, we stand with about 40% of our weight on the heel and 60% on the ball of the foot. But in a higher-heeled shoe, our altered center of gravity can shift as much as 90% of the weight to the ball of the foot. You've probably noticed that the foot of a female who wears such shoes is soon deformed. There were such common problems that the Washington Post reported on them, mentioning pump bump, ankle injuries, metatarsaglia, Morton's neuroma, hammer toes, tight Achilles tendons, bunions, and screwed up knees. But I have to tell you, what really blew my mind is what high heels do to your posture. When you wear high heels, it forces hyperlordosis in the pelvis, which is this great accentuation in the curve of the lower back. But that's not all that happens. The brain has to make a lot of adjustments to ankles and knees and hips and your spine and your head to help you maintain an erect stance and equilibrium. This is not a terrible thing in a young woman. But in a study published recently in the American Journal of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, investigators observed that it can be a disaster in a middle-aged or older woman because the pelvis is stiffer and it can't accommodate the motion necessary to keep you from falling over. Given the popularity of high heels, gyms have been holding high heel workouts and workshops. Long after Sex in the City went off the air, heels kept getting higher. It really didn't help to see the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, wearing high heels when she was already noticeably pregnant. Then, suddenly, low-heeled shoes were back in fashion, or so the New York Times and the Huffington Post said. We were seeing block heels, which had been out of style since Jackie Kennedy was in the White House, and really pointy toes on kitten heels, replacing the sky-high heels on the shelves of fashionable department stores. The economy was improving, if only slowly, and heels were getting lower. Remember this, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker as Carrie Bradshaw? Well, in March 2013, the big story was that Parker, now 48 and the mother of three, could no longer wear the shoes she'd made famous. She'd ruined her own feet and a lot of other people's feet also. In fact, her doctor told her that she has a bone in her foot that's not supposed to be there, but developed because she wore high heels so compulsively. Uh, as a result, she is transitioning to more sensible footwear, in April 2013, she put the shoes she wore as Carrie up for auction to raise money for LaGuardia High School of Music, Art, and the Performing Arts. Who would have ever thought that the queen of high heels would turn to sensible shoes in midlife? I suppose I'll be running into her at Harry's Shoes on the Upper West Side where I've been buying nice, flat, comfortable shoes for years. Here's a fantastic new idea. 
because I really don't think that women are going to give up high heels forever. I ran into Tanya Heath, a remarkable, sensible, and very entrepreneurial gal who took three years with the help of a team of engineers to design shoes with heels that can be removed and replaced at the touch of a button. Each pair of shoes comes with two sets of heels, an elongated stiletto, that's very sexy, and a shorter, low, chunky heel that would be very comfortable to walk in. Imagine being able to put a tiny pair of heels, just the heels, in an evening bag and to set out in your nice, comfortable pumps. So far, these shoes are only available in Europe and Australia, but you can order them online, and Heath is looking for a U.S. partner.